Hello, my name is Adrian Eady, a Rebuild Detroit scholar. And for my research, I studied the use of Xenopus lavis oocytes as a useful model to understand the protein tau and neurodegeneration in Dr. Joshi's lab in the biology department. My research consists of reading research. Two main sources used were Google Scholar and the University of Detroit Mercy's online library, which granted access to articles I could not access through Google Scholar. These sources provided review, scientific, and peer review articles. I inspected for articles from certain domains for trustworthy information and recent articles from the year 2000 to the present. Our lab also had weekly meetings using Microsoft Teams and outside communication for recommending articles. Six tau isoforms exist, three each of three repeat and four repeat, whose numbers correlate with the number of binding sites. In a healthy brain, these isoforms are proportional to each other. The wild type tau's main function is to stabilize, maintain, and create microtubules which assists in creating the cytoskeleton of neurons. When tau hyperphosphorylates, microtubules are destabilized, causing distortion in the shape of the neuron, changing the function. There can be different degrees of hyperphosphorylation, relating to a variety of tau pathies and tau-related neurodegenerative diseases. The two diseases focused on in this research are Alzheimer's disease and frontal temporal dementia with Parkinsonism 17. In AD, tau is hyperphosphorylated, causing distorted microtubule function with the microtubules tangling with itself. These tangles stop neurons from functioning properly. In FTDP17, not only is tau overgrown in neurons and glial cells, a mutant tau causes an imbalance between the three repeat and four repeat tau isoforms. The mutant tau starts the onset of this disease and causes the most damage. With many of the pathologies of these diseases being alike, finding a cure or treatment to subside the effects of the diseases is difficult to pinpoint, as misdiagnosis of diseases and new research of tau behavior continues. To understand tau, these models have been used. Human tau mice, Drosophila melangaster, nematodes, zebrafish, and the Xenopus lavis oocyte. The oocyte size is between 1 to 1.3 millimeters. About 1,000 oocytes can be obtained, and a simple surgery can physically remove them. Progesterone was injected into the oocyte to start the maturation process. Since tau is not naturally present in this model, it is also injected. Four studies made progress in understanding how tau functions and the effects when hyperphosphorylated or mutated. In the first study, an NMR spectroscope was used to see inside the oocyte to observe the tau protein. Inside was a crowded intracellular environment and tau bounded to microtubules. In a certain physiological state, they could detect phosphorylation of tau. With this capability, the opportunity to observe the effects of tau hyperphosphorylated can be achieved. The second study focused on FTDP17 disease. They tested their hypothesis of which tau isoforms and the tau mutant gene had the greatest effect on microtubule function. Four repeat tau isoform in high concentrations halted maturation, specifically prophase 1. And the two of the seven tau mutant genes also affected the maturation process greater than the four repeat isoform. The third study had a hypothesis that hyperphosphorylation of tau occurs during the maturation process in AD. They injected a human tau isoform in different concentrations and witnessed overaccumulation of during maturation. The last study tested to observe other possibilities of hyperphosphorylation other than mitosis phase. When they injected the tau protein during prophase 1 and then progesterone, which was the opposite of the previous studies, they noticed tau hyperphosphorylating during meiosis 2. The advantages of this model include large size for observations and injections, many models viable for use, and a male frog isn't required as ovulation can proceed with hormone injection. The disadvantages include absence of 
indigenous tau proteins, regeneration of ovulation cycle of about three months, and a decline in quality as Xenopus lavis ages. This model is efficient and convenient in providing microscopic evidence of the functions and involvement of tau proteins, but there still needs to be more research and experimentation to solidify these results along with finding more ways to use the oocytes. This and many other models can help in understanding tau pathies, but the use of this model will be costly in our lab. We have received a pilot grant from the NIH to use for in-person lab needs. We're hoping the COVID regulations are lifted by summer 2021 to get started. We will use Drosophila melangaster to make some discoveries of our own towards tyopathies. In the meantime, we plan on publishing a review paper. Since a lot of research is spread out, we're collecting information to have in one place. This will find any gaps in research and possibly start new hypotheses and experiments to one day fully understand the complicated protein tau. The authors would like to thank Tia, Devin, and Garrett for helping in providing their research information. We would also like to thank the NIH for the pilot grant to pursue in-person lab and the Rebuild Detroit program for the research opportunity.